First thing we started this unit off with was deciding if models were exponential growths or decays. So I'm going to write us a few of those right here and we'll talk about why and which one those are. Just a reminder, remember this is notes you'll be able to use on your test. I got y equals 5 to the x. That's the first one we're going to talk about. Then after that, I've got f of x equals... Point two to the x and one more of these y equals that's an x up there y equals six e to the negative x. So the directions for all three of these ask us to tell whether or not those are exponential growth or decay functions. What we're looking for when we decide if they're growth or decay functions is the number that the power is on. If it's bigger than one, we're growth. If it's less than one, we're decay. So on number one there, it's a growth. That's a growth. Very good, Mr. Cobb. What about number two? That's a growth. Point two. Is that bigger than one or less than That's one? Less. That's, That's less. That's less. So number two is a decay. Very good. Now the rule changed on number three. Does number three, my exponent's on e and e is two point something which is bigger than one but my exponent's negative so since my exponent's negative that makes number three be a decay, decay. Right. very good hey okay, everybody remember that able to handle those pretty good okay next thing we went to after that was just some simplifying stuff so here i have 20 e to the third over 10 e to the sixth i'm going to do a couple of these 20 e to the third over 10 e to the sixth and the directions just say to simplify okay so first thing we need to notice here is that that 20 over 10 reduces Okay, that's 2, and then we got the e, and Stephen remembered that when we have division with exponents, they get subtracted, so 3 minus 6 is negative 3. So we're looking at that to start with. Is it okay to leave that answer like that? No. Why not? You're right, Landon, good job, why not? Good, when you have a negative exponent, it goes on bottom and becomes positive. Okay, let's do one more simplifying one like that. Here I've got negative 3e to the negative 5x to the second. All right, negative 3e to the negative 5x all to the second. What do think we might do to start with here? Very good. That second power, like Jody said, has to go to everything. 
So what's negative 3 to the second power? 9. Good. A negative times a negative is a positive. Now when we go here, what do you do when it's power to a power? Multiply. Multiply. Very good. Y'all are remembering good. So negative 5x times 2 is negative 10x. Maybe that will all show up there in a second. Okay. What did we do in that last one when we had negative power? Mm -hmm. um, 9 over e to the 10x. <coughs> okay, then after we did that, we learned how to rewrite back and forth from exponential to log form, so we'll do a couple of those. Okay, this says 2 to the x equals 8. The directions don't say solve here. You could. You should know that x is 3. Okay, you ought to be able to figure that out. 2 to the what power equals 8? 2 times 2 times 2, so it's 2 to the third. But my directions don't say to do that. My directions say to rewrite in either exponential or log form. So as this one is, it's exponential form. So I'm going to rewrite it in logarithmic, which Stephen said is log base. 2 of 8 is equal to x. So that would be our answer. It didn't ask us to solve. We just rewrote it. Okay, so what if I gave you, let's go the other way. Let me give you a log one. This one says log base x of 36 is equal to 2. What would that look like in exponential form? Very good, Jody. Got a brain fart, Lena. Thirty-six. All right. After we did that, we uh, went to graphs. So let's talk a little bit about graphs. <coughs> If I gave you y equals log base one-fifth of x, and the direction said graph. Okay, get a calculator. Make sure we remember how to do this, because this is how we did them in class. Everybody make sure you remember. Go to your y equals button on the very top underneath the screen. Get your y equals up there. Then go to math. Scroll it down until you find log base. Fill in your base of one fifth, and then your x, and hit, and then you can hit graph. Let's see here. Mhm. Mm Good. Should get something kind of like that. Kind of, sort of. Anybody need help getting that on the calculator? Good. Did you get it, Connor? Good, 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 good. <coughs> All right, then we did transformations. Let's describe a couple of transformations. We'll do two of these. I got F, whoops, F of X is equal to e to the negative x, g of x is equal to e to the negative 5x minus 8. So the, oh, it didn't write yet. <coughs> e to the negative x, come on, you can do it. You can do it. Almost there. Right. And whoo, that one came fast. All right, so directions on this say to describe the transformation from f of x to g of x. So the two things that you need to notice that are new 
are those two pieces there. Okay, so that five is up there on in front of the X. When something is being multiplied, it, it in, um, indicates a shrink or a stretch. So we got to figure out that five is in front of the X, not in front of the whole thing. So is it horizontal or vertical if it's just in front of the X? Mm -mm. And here's how I remember that. X is horizontal. So just in front of the X, it's horizontal. And what's weird about horizontal when we shrink or stretch? Take the reciprocal. Very good. And one-fifth is the reciprocal of five. And that's smaller than one. So it'll be a horizontal shrink of one-fifth. There's your first piece. The second piece is an easy one. We did a million of it. Just a minus eight stuck on the end. Which means a... Yeah. Uh-oh. Fix to get reminded. What does the minus eight stuck on the end mean? Somebody remind Landon. Good. Goes down eight. Vertical. And you can just write down eight. I'm okay with that. Vertical translation. Down eight. Let's do one more of those. This one I've got f of x is equal to log base 4 of x, g of x is equal to 1 half log base 4 of x plus 5. It's a plus five out there on the end. Let me write it up here above so you can see it. It's supposed to be on the after the log base four. All right, so new things that you see. That. And then the plus five. Okay, so this time the one half that it's being multiplied by is out in front of the whole thing. When it was just in front of the X, it was a horizontal shrink or stretch. This one's in front of the whole thing. So it's got to be vertical, right? Does vertical use it like it is, or does it take the reciprocal? Like it is, so it stays one half, which is smaller than one. So it's a shrink of a half. Now that plus five, the other part that's new, it's real important, and, and I screwed it up by trying to cram too much in there, but it's real important that you notice it's in a parenthesis with the X. Left. Very good, Landon. So it's left and right, and plus it goes the opposite way. So it's a horizontal translation of five units left. Got your memory jog. You're on a roll now. <coughs> Alright, then we did the expanding and condensing. Let's do a couple of those. Just trying to get you more notes of all the stuff we've done on our unit. This one says log base 8 of 3xy. The directions say to expand or condense the logarithmic expression. This one we're going to be expanding because log is only written one time. It's already condensed. So we want to write this out with as many logs as we can, and there were some properties that we had when we did that. The product property, which was friends with addition. The quotient property, which was friends with subtraction. And then the power property. This problem only involves one of the properties, but it involves it more than one time. What does 3xy mean mathematically? Add, subtract, multiply, or divide. Multiply it means 3 times x times y, right? So this is the product property. So I'm going to take that 3xy and I'm going to put a log 8, log base 8 with an addition sign on each one of them. So I'll have log base 8 of 3. Product is friends with addition, so plus log base 8 of x 
another multiply, so plus log base 8 of y. There was no division, so I didn't use it. There were no powers, so I didn't use it. Mm -hmm, that's it. This one has got log written several times, so we're going to condense it. It says 2 ln of x plus 5 ln of 2 minus ln of 8. So ln, that's a natural log, so we have log written in there three times, so we want to condense this one down to just one log. First thing I notice is that the first piece and the second piece both have a number in front of them. I got a 2 in front of the log and a 5 in front of the log. When there's a coefficient, that's there because of the power property. So I'm going to take that 2 and make it be a power on the x. I'm going to take that 5 and make it be a power on the 2. Okay, so that's the first thing I'm going to do. So I've got the natural log of x squared plus... Now, I know what 2 to the 5th is. It's a number I can actually figure out. So I'm going to say the natural log. Instead of writing 2 to the 5th, 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16 times 2 is 32. That's 32. Why didn't I do that on the x? Because I don't know what x is, so I couldn't do that. All right, now I've got a plus sign and a minus sign. Addition is friends with the product property. So this would be the natural log of x squared times 32. Now I've still got that minus sign left. Subtractions, friends, with the quotient property. So this would be the natural log of... I'm going to flip my 32 and x squared now because we're used to writing the number first. So I'm going to write 32 x squared divided by 8. Now, sometimes you'll be done there, but in this case, we can simplify that one step farther because 32 and 8 is 4. Very good. So we'll have the natural log of 4x squared. Alright, this next one is about as easy as it can be, but I want to talk to you about how the directions are written. I don't re remember how they'll be written on the test. We'll change them if we need to. This says log base 7 of 9. The directions read, use the change of base formula to evaluate the logarithm. You don't need to do that. You don't. We learn the change of base formula the same day we learn those properties. But you can just hit math and go down to log base and evaluate it like it is. So hit math, go down to log base, round me to the nearest hundredths. What do you got on that? That is seven. Yeah, log base seven of nine. Uh, 1.12. Want it round to a three? Or is it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anybody able to use the calculator and get those? Okay, so when we do a problem that looks like this, that's the same thing we're going to do. This one says 5 to the x equals 8, and the directions say solve for x. So we're going to take that equation, 5 to the x equals 8, that's an exponential form, rewrite it in log form. So that would be, what would it read in log form? Log base what? 5 of what? 8 is equal to x. So now you'll do that in your calculator just like we did the one above it. Tell me to the nearest hundredths when you get it. Well, I don't know if it's 
doesn't have the three. I get 1.29. Okay, this next one the directions say solve also, but it's going to have to use a property before it's ready to solve. So I've got natural log of x, ln of x plus natural log ln of x plus 2 is equal to 3. So directions say solve for x, but the dilemma in this one is that we have two logs. So we have to condense that down to one log. So you have to look at this and realize that addition right there is friends with product property. So this is going to be the same as the natural log of x times x plus 2. Okay, then I would go ahead and distribute that x, right? So I'd have a natural log of x squared plus 2x is equal to 3. Okay, that's log form. And this is a tricky one. We've got to write it in exponential form. So when it's natural log, what is your base? What, what's understood to be down here when it's natural log? Ten. Not 10, ten. that's if it's just plain log. What, Stephen? Well, I said ten. That's if it's just plain log with no number. Remember that. That's a 10. But when it's natural log, it's an e. Remember that? So this will be e to the third equals x squared plus 2x. Okay. <coughs> What's e to the third the same as? How do you figure that out? There's an e button on your calculator. Look above LN. Hit the blue button and then LN and type E to the third. So 20.08 is equal to x squared plus 2x. What do you think we got to do to start solving this thing now? <coughs> Point oh eight over that's good. So we'll have x squared plus two x minus twenty point oh eight is equal to zero. X equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four. I see well, over two eight. Hard to get that out of my head. <laughs> you don't want it out of your hip. So it'll be negative 2 quadratic formula plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. <coughs> Y'all get that going in your calculator while I'm getting it going in mine. I got about 9.18 underneath the radical when I did all that. So I'm looking at negative 2. I got about what? 9.18. Right. Negative 4 times negative 20.08 is 80.32. Mm -hmm. And then I added 4 to that. Because the negative times the negative is a positive. Okay. 
Okay, so now when you do negative 2 plus that 9.18, enter and divide by 2. Yeah, 76 is not right. Uh, negative 2 plus 9.18 divided by 2, I got about 3.59. I don't have room to write that on here. Then if I do negative 2 minus 9.18, say it again, negative 5.59. I don't remember you having any maybe one or two on the assignments that were that long. Probably won't be one that long on the exam. Alright, just got two more I need to look at with you. You're doing good. What's that first number? 3.59. It's bad. Mm -hmm. Alright, this next one is, is just a solving one again, but it's got a greater than or less than sign in it. You don't do it any different. We talked about that when we did them in class, but I just don't want you to panic if you see one. It says e to the 4x minus 2 power is greater than or equal to 16. And we're going to do this just like we would if it were a equal sign. So that's an exponential form, so we're going to rewrite it in log form. So we're going to write log base e of 16 is greater than or equal to 4x minus 2. Now we just talked about log base e. Log base e is the same as the natural log. So now you're going to hit on your calculator natural log of 16. So I hit ln 16, enter. I got about 2.77. So to start solving this, I need to get the x all by itself, so I'm going to add 2. So I got about 4.77 is greater than or equal to 4x and then divide by 4. Yep. So 1.19 is greater than or equal to x. I always flip it. You don't have to. Either one of those would work. So we did it the same way just because there's a greater than sign doesn't mean anything special. And the very last thing that we did in this unit was when I gave you ordered pair and you had to write the equation. Okay, so let's do one of those. Remember the equation for exponential is y equals ab to the x. So the two ordered pair that I have this time are 3, 8 and 5, 2. Okay, when we did these in class, First thing we did was took the first points and plugged them in for the y and the x. So we said 8 equals ab to the third. Then we did the same on the other equation. So 2 equals ab to the fifth. 
After that, the next thing we did was we solved our first equation for A. So we divide by B cubed, so A would equal 8 divided by B cubed. Y'all remember doing this? We had a worksheet on it. Then I take that, since that's what A is, and I plug it in there for that A. So I have 2 equals 8 over B cubed times B to the fifth. What does B to the fifth over B cubed reduce to? Very good, Dalton. So I got 2 equals 8B squared. How do I solve that for B now? Trying to get this B here all by itself. It's being multiplied by 8. Divide by 8. 2 divided by 8, that's just a 1 fourth. So I have 1 fourth equals B squared. How do you want to do a squared? Square root. square root. What's the square root of 1 fourth? 1 half. So there's my B. My B is 1 half. Now I can take this 1 half, plug it back in here to figure out my A. So I need to cube 1 half because this says B cubed, right? So that means 1 times 1 times 1 over 2 times 2 times 2. So that's B cubed would be 1 eighth. So 8 divided by 1 eighth. What's 8 divided by 1 eighth? No. Nope. 64. So to write our final answer now, we got an A of 64, a B of 1 half. We just plug them back in that equation. Y equals A times B to the X. Okay, point of what we did there was I went through and worked each type of problem that we've gone over so far in this unit. Friday you got your study guide. Tomorrow then we'll go over the study guide. So now you'll have the study guide and you'll have these review notes and you'll have any notes from the whole unit long that you'll be able to use. Lots of people told me that they thought they did pretty good on the study guide. How'd y'all feel about it? They said that last word problem was tricky, but other than that, they felt pretty good. Good deal. We'll look at that tomorrow.